Hi everyone, so this week um, your goal is to complete the ACT math assessment. Um, this assessment kind of serves as like a final exam as it's at the end of the course and it kind of encompasses a lot of what we did this semester, but it's much bigger than that as well. Um, so what is the ACT math assessment? Well, it was created by employers basically to assess how workplace ready you are um, in regards to math specifically. Um, you will likely through your time at Brighton Stratton take other ACT assessments as well um, for other topics. But basically they, um, they understand that you don't need to know trigonometry um, for most jobs, right? Um, so it's more of an accurate gauge of what you need to know um, to be successful in the workplace. And you'll get to see later on um, how your scores will tie to various jobs. Okay. Um, so you actually already took this assessment. It was part of the entry to Bryant and Stratton. As soon as you started with the college, you had to take an assessment that decided what math class you were going to be in. Whether it was pre-college math, math 101, which is workplace math, math 201, which is quantitative reasoning or college math, right? Um, so you've already seen this. It's 33 multiple choice questions. Um, it is not timed. Uh, so don't worry about that, especially for those of you who are like me and maybe a slower reader or you have to read things multiple times. Um, you don't have to stress over that on this assessment. Um, now the questions, they range from like a high school difficulty to like a doctoral level difficulty. Um, and do, so basically because there's such a wide range here, we're assessing more than this course. So if your score is lower than you wished it to be, um, that doesn't really tell you that much about this course specifically. Um, so I wouldn't get down about that, especially as you're going to see um, the scores might not be as high as the scores that you are used to. Um, but we're going to talk about that. I'm going to help you find comfort in understanding why that's not is a big of a deal. Um, you can use your ACT formula sheet, your measurement conversion table from class, and a calculator on this assessment. If you need uh, access to the formula sheet or conversion table, it's on Blackboard, but if you can't find it, just reach out to me. So how are you graded? Well, um, your score is going to be out of 100. The average Ryan Stratton student scores between 49 and 64 percent, roughly. Is your <laughs> um, if you're someone who is typically a C, B, or A student, you're looking at those percentages like what? Um, yeah. So, and you know what? 64 percent on this is pretty good. I mean, anything above that 50 percent, you're in a pretty good spot. Um, which I'll show you in a table that explains more of this. Um, but basically your score out of 100 is going to correspond to a level, level one to seven, okay? Um, if you have an associate's degree or diploma, uh, like many of you are going for, it's expected that you score about a level four or five. Um, I would say for bachelors, you're looking at like a level five or six, right? Um, if you score better than that, awesome, but that's those are kind of like the expectations. So. Each level also has a corresponding grade that you'll receive on the assessment. So even if you score um, 55%, it doesn't mean you get 55% on this assessment. It has like a slight kind of curve to it, um, but mathematically it doesn't really work out like a curve, but you'll understand more when I go to the table on the next slide. So you can find this table um, on Blackboard as well, but basically it outlines everything. So the first column is the number of questions you got correct, all right? Um, and then you can see the percentage scores and then your level and then your actual score in this class. Okay, so let's run through this. So if you scored, oh, if you got 18 questions right, okay? 18 would fall in this category, 17 to 21. Um, so you are at a level four, which means you would receive a 70% on this assessment, even though your score would be much lower than a 70, it would be in the 50s um, if you scored that. But, um, so that's your that's the grade that you'll see in Blackboard. So this is the range that you're trying to be in, is this level four and five range, okay? Um, now, 
to be in math 101, like if you scored right into this course, you didn't take pre-college math, then you had to at least get a level three. So you had to already get at least 13 questions right on this. Um, and so that should bring you a little bit of comfort as well. Okay. Uh, so the last thing I want to point out about this assessment is there's this really cool system uh, or website in which you can actually search different jobs and see what scores um, they would recommend for that job. And I put the link in here. Um, I'll post this PowerPoint as well. Um, I wanted you to be able to see the link instead of creating a hyperlink just in case you wanted to type it. Um, just type it into the URL bar. Okay. I'm going to switch over to my internet browser so I can show you how this actually functions. It's really cool. So um, that link brings you to a page that looks like this. You probably you won't see all these jobs filled in. Um, it's because I was already messing around with it. But if you go to the job title and you search like, let's say medical assistant, which is one of our bigger programs right now, um, search medical assistance, double click here. And it pulls up this little window and it shows you for each ACT roughly what your scores should be. Um, these are scores of people who are already in that field. So applied math, the median skill level for a um, medical assistant is four, right? Which is where we're hoping most of you are gonna be at. Um, There's some people who have threes, that's the minimum. And then maximum is five. So somewhere in that three to five range. Um, obviously it makes you a little bit more employable if you're in that four to five range. You can read more about the job and the responsibilities below which if you're going into that you probably have a good idea now say you want to eventually go back to school for a registered nurse search it you can see how it changes so registered nurse median skill level is five so the essentially the average or middle of the pack is scoring a five on math with a minimum of now four and a maximum now five because um, I'm assuming registered nurses just requires you to understand a little bit more math, um, maybe on like the conversion end of things. All right. Um, so if you have any questions on this ACT assessment, please reach out to me. I really wanted you to see that this is more than just kind of a final exam. This is more than um, just a math test. It can actually show you kind of where you're at in, rel in relative terms to where you want to be and where you need to be for your job. And ultimately, you end up taking this assessment again um, later on, closer to graduation um, in one of your other courses. You'll take basically, I think there's like three or four ACTs that you have to take in that course. but. Um, so this is kind of like a, a practice run too, because when you take it in that course, you're actually taking it for the ability to get like a certificate um, that shows your readiness level that you can include in your portfolio for when you are going out on um, interviews and just your overall job search. Okay, so reach out if you need anything, guys.